It's your game with Scott coming to you um, with another flaw in this program. Apparently, a bigger flaw, uh, which is a bit more annoying. Apparently, um, you can do 10 minutes of capture, however, it includes the pause. So, if I pause for 4 minutes and I have 6 minutes of uh, airtime, that's 10 minutes by this um, program's clock. So, we're going to use the pause far more sparingly now. I'm just going to try to finish up this series and we'll see what we do um, in future CR Games Scott uh, editions. Um, apologize for that so we did get a little cut off last time uh, we're going to try to see what happens to the terrorists so let's uh, move ahead and uh, see if we can stay off the pause button as much as possible apologize for that folks and um, try not to get caught like that again anyway on to the game all right we're just gonna flip through this stuff again um, and And he throws her down, and whoop. so let's draw a gun, and fire a gun, and I'm using the uh, keyboard just so I don't screw up, and we're going to, believe we're going to have to get on there a second time when, the, there we go, alright, so, um, it says in a faint voice, the timing device on the bomb has been activated, so uh, we have a little bit of a problem now that there's a bomb. So I apologize for missing part of that. It's pretty much them just uh, cursing us in the end, and um, uh, not too much on that. So anyway, I'm just going to do this while we watch, just because of the stupid pause thing. Because uh, the problem with that, too, is the timer's no longer in sync with the actual with the time we have on the clock, so... Um, um, well, pardon me. <laughs> Uh, bomb. Let's have about that. So if it gets off sync, it'll be hard for me to um, uh, The steward is still barely shaking up. So thanks very much for saving her life. Then heads into the cockpit. Alright. Uh, anyway, um, so it makes it harder. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Keith says, boy, Sonny, you're a hero. We better find that bomb or else. I'll go to the cockpit for the bomb. You search the cabin area. Yeah, Keith, uh, I guess, hang out with the uh, attractive stewardess and we get to look over the carnage and save the day. Sounds fair. But, uh, that is par for the course, I guess. Search body. Oh, I guess before Keith had hang out with the, uh, the Italian, stereotypically uh, Italian guy. Anyway, um, search uh, masked man. Look at turban and of unmasked man. All right, let's cut the chase. So you probably have to do a lot of guess and check. I think that's what I did when I first played it years ago. Um, to find um, entitled "Building Your Own Bomb" and. That's that, so... Okay, look in pocket. Oh, we have to get this, too. Look in pocket of masked man. So let's see if we calibrate the gun correctly, because they did go down. You find a pair of wire clippers in the jacket pocket of the masked um, hijacker. Alright, so this is a thing that I think took forever for me, or at least maybe I had my dad do it for me. Uh, when I played it years ago, was, um, alright, I was trying to figure out how to use the bomb, so I think it's the toilet, open toilet. Okay, open dispenser. I always thought it was in the toilet. All right, so the bomb's in there. You got 92 seconds to take it out, and they're just gonna play it. You normally would look at the book and figure out how to do it, um, and we're just gonna play it the cheating way and just go through it as quickly as possible. I haven't saved it, but um, okay, but I, I trust myself to be able to use the walkthrough to. Uh, get through. If that was stupid, then I'll do it offline for you, and unfortunately uh, we'll have to use our the fateful pause button. Purple. So I guess that gives me added incentive 
to uh, do this the right way. <laughs> Disconnect blue. Yeah, you, know, you think just recording your voice and what's on screen would not either be that difficult or that expensive. <laughs> um, but you'd be wrong. You'd be very wrong. white wire and connect yellow wire snip timer snap the bomb is disarmed all right exit view yes we are quite the hero Alright, let's see what happens. You announced to everyone that you have successfully disarmed the bomb. Everyone cheers and offers words of praise. <laughs> You'd think so. And here's our buddy Keith. Keith says, well done, Sonny. I couldn't have done a better job myself. Captain comes over to intercom and says, we're all, we are now landing. Please sit down and buckle your seatbelts. Interesting though, they continued on to, um, Steelton. <laughs> but, uh, I guess... Yeah, so maybe it isn't Pittsburgh, the yeah, Pittsburgh, L.A. Um, um, we're now on the ground. You don't realize that yourself. It maybe isn't the Pittsburgh, L.A. Uh, equivalence if it takes that little time. Let's get off the playing side. Keith says, I've had enough excitement for a while. Deputy Sky Marshal walks up and says, My my son, what in heaven's name did you all get into here? Oh, maybe it's supposed to be in Texas then if you've got a... Uh, with your heart pounding and your voice breaking, you explain in detail the events surrounding the attempted hijacking. You give the Sky Marshal the paper and wire clippers telling how you disarmed the bomb. Deputy Marshal, uh, after taking down your statement, says, Well, it looks like a job well done to me, feller. Y'all go right ahead on with your business, and we'll finish up cleaning this mess. Alright, and everyone else just kind of sits there. <laughs> you and Keith leave the airport and are met at the, air leave the airplane and are met at the airport by Officer Jarvis Pittman. Graduate transportation to the police station. So pretty much these black screens are normally so CR did not have to animate it. So we do not see what the uh, Steelton Airport looks like. Um, we do see what I guess is a pretty nice looking uh, police station, and they even have a helicopter. Yeehaw! Let m let me show you what this baby can do. Uh, I don't think I'm in control right now, so apologize for that, folks. Um, it probably leads you in a still shaking Keith to Steelden PD's homicide lieutenant's office. Alright, so this is the other police. Wow, Keith says that sure was fun, wasn't it, Sonny? Yeah, I guess Keith liked it. Lieutenant says, come on in, the door's open. Alright, I think we can finish this up before we get caught. Um, Wild Willie walks over, shakes your hand, and says, Detective Bonds and Robinson, welcome to Steelton. So I guess it's Keith Robinson. And Wild Willie says, Well, you dudes are chasing one fine upstand citizen. Continuing, he says, It seems this punk Baines has already started his handiwork here, too. You know the phone tap subject, Don Colby, he asks. Without waiting for a reply, he goes on to say, I hate to tell you boys but this, but after putting a tap on Colby's phone, I sent an unmarked unit over to check on him. And my man found him dead, deader than a doornail. A 32 cal hole in his head. Uh, in his head. We did manage to connect. Willie tells you on one threatening call from Bane. I don't think it would help, but the call was traced to a payphone in a, our local Burt Park. I sent a man over there to have a look around. He says, but nothing was found. You boys will probably want to go over there and look around. Willie grunts, but I think you'll be spinning your wheels. While Willie says, I think Officer Pittman is waiting in the hall. We can drive you over to the park. Good luck, boys. Alright, well, there's a couple things we need to do here, but, um, um, I think that's enough for one episode. We're getting a little bit t close on time, and like uh, we found out beforehand, um, I can easily get cut off. So, uh, let's quit while we're ahead. Let's not go down to the wire. And, um, this is Sierra Game with Scott. I'm back, glad to be back with you, and, um, we're continuing on to pretty much the final stages of Police Quest 2 at long last. Uh, I will see you next time, and, um, until then. Take care.